Hello everyone, I'm your hostess with the mostest, 8 Second Gaming, and in today's video we're going to be talking about how you can start to get better aim in Apex. Because I think we all know that aim is a very important skill, and if you can't kill anyone, you're not going to be winning any games. But on top of that, if you're trying to impress that e-girl or discord kitten, you cannot be making Helen Keller look like a sharpshooter. So today we're going to be breaking down some tips and tricks, and by the end of this you will be an aim god. But while aim is important, there are a bunch of other skills that go into becoming a good Apex player. And if you're looking to learn all those skills, then you need to check out the Game Leap website right now. Over there, we have top level coaches creating the best, most highly informative guides that are all site exclusive, so you won't find them anywhere else. We have legend guides, gun guides, VOD reviews, and much more. So if you really want to take your Apex game to the next level, click the link in the description, pick yourself up a membership, or I won't share any of my craft dinner with you. But okay, with that out of the way, let's jump into tip number one, and that is going to be aim is more than just crosshair placement. Now, I see that players make this mistake a bunch of times, and it's honestly just a very simple mistake. A lot of people think that in order to have good aim, all they need to do is just work on their crosshair placement and then work on recoil control. But aim actually has a lot more to do with it than just that. A large factor of having good aim is also having good game sense as well. In order to have that godlike shroud aim, you have to be good at positioning in order to make sure that you can hit certain shots and to be able to open yourself to more angles of attacking players. Plus, if you're constantly rushing in, throwing yourself into bad positions, your aim is going to suffer because you can't really do anything in those situations. I see it all the time where people might have pretty decent aim, but because they cannot position to save themselves in a fight, they're not able to use that aim and then they die because of it. With better game sense comes better positioning, better positioning comes better aim because you're going to be putting yourselves in better positions to be shooting people. And with that, you also need to have good anticipation. If you are able to tell where somebody's going to be coming from and anticipate where they're going to be peeking, then that leads into better crosshair placement and even better positioning. If you've ever seen it where somebody has just tracked somebody through a wall and just pre-fired them perfectly, it's because they're anticipation or they're cheating. But I'm an optimist, so let's give people the benefit of the doubt and just go with they have a better gaming chair. But if you're able to put yourself into the mind of the enemy and say, where would I be attacking from? Then you're going to be able to figure out the best course of action for where they're going to be coming from and anticipate it a lot better. And then you're going to be getting people reporting you left, right, and center because you basically shot them around a corner. But now we can talk about tip number two, and that is to warm up, warm up, warm up, warm up. This is one that really needs to be drilled into people's heads because I've said it multiple times on this channel already across multiple different videos and people still don't warm up. Having a great warm up routine is one of the most important parts to getting better, crispy aim and if you're not warming up you're essentially wasting your first couple games because you're not going to be getting the shooting time that you would in game that you would in the firing range and you're going to be wasting those times trying to warm up in game when you could have just warmed up in the range. Now I hear what a lot of people are going to be typing, oh, but 8 second, I only have X amount of time to play each day and I don't want to waste that time in the firing range. And to that I say warm ups only take about 10 to 20 minutes at most and they will drastically help you improve at the game. If you are to look at any professional sport, if you watch hockey or football or soccer or anything like that, you will always see that they warm up before games. And there's a reason for that, you have to warm up in order to be able to play at that top level. And if you want to improve at Apex, there's no exception. If you want to play like the best, you have to be warming up. Trust me, a good warm up sets you up for success. But now jumping into tip number three, that is your settings can actually be messing you up. Now for this one, I'm not just talking about your sensitivity, though that is very important. But for this, actually, we're going to be talking about your FOV and other in-game settings because these can actually be causing you issues if you're not careful. Now, for the people that don't know, FOV just stands for field of view. It's basically how much of the game you can see at any given time. And as your FOV changes, so does your sensitivity because it has to match itself up. If you can see more of the screen, when you move your mouse or thumbstick, it has to adjust for that amount of screen that is showing. So this is why you need to be dialing in your own personal FOV when picking a sensitivity. Now, there are multiple good FOVs to use. And I'm not going to be diving into stretch dice here because that is a whole different box of frogs. But for me personally, I like to use 104 FOV. It's wide enough to see most things, but it's not too wide to start to distort the picture and give the weird fisheye effect that 110 does. But again, this is a personal choice and it's something that you as a player need to figure out for yourself. So play around with a few different FOVs, see what you like about them, see what you don't like about them, and then go from there. 
But on top of that, if you guys have FOV ability scaling turned on, this can be causing you to miss shots as well. What FOV ability scaling does is when you use something like an Octane Stim or a Bloodhound Alt or just something where you increase speed, you will see that your FOV widens very suddenly. And if you remember from before, a change in FOV also means a change in your sensitivity. And if you're not used to that sensitivity, that can cause you to miss shots. It's not worth it to have that change of FOV. You should always be turning FOV ability scaling off. But now tip number four, this is to dial in your sensitivity. Now sensitivity is the base layer of aim and you cannot have an aim guide without mentioning this stuff. Like I said, sensitivity is your foundation, and when you build your foundation, then you're able to layer on top all of your other aim skills, so this needs to be a solid base layer. Now this is kind of embarrassing, but back in the day, I used to just play on whatever sensitivity my mouse was, and I would just roll with it. I didn't know about DPI, I didn't know about sensitivity changing, so whenever I opened a new game or got a new mouse, I just used whatever the game gave me. But thankfully, I grew up and I started to learn more about it and now I actually have a pretty good sensitivity for my own personal liking. Now, for dialing in your personal sensitivity, for reference, a lower sensitivity is more for tracking, and a higher sensitivity is better for movement and flicking. Though, do keep in mind that you can still have good movement and flicks on a lower sensitivity, and you can still have good tracking on higher sensitivity. No matter what you use, you can learn to do other stuff with. But these are just baselines to be going off of, so you can start to pick what type of sensitivity you want to have. And another way to find what sensitivity you like is to look at a pro player that you enjoy and see what type of sensitivity they use. Hop into the firing range, try it out, and play around with it a little bit and make adjustments based on what you need. Is it too fast? Is it too slow? Is it just straight up uncomfortable? Play around with it, change it, don't be afraid to mess around with your settings. And that goes for the people that have been playing with the same sensitivity for a while as well. You guys cannot be afraid to change your sensitivity either. I've seen it where people use the same sensitivity for years and never change it. But actually that can cause you to fall behind in certain areas, because if you're lacking in certain parts of your aim, then you might be able to fix that with just a few sensitivity changes. If you find that you're not able to keep up with somebody as they're sliding or strafing, you might want to turn your sensitivity up a little bit. Or if you always find yourself in front of somebody, try lowering it a little bit. But if you've been in a sensitivity for a long time, always do small micro adjustments before you do massive changes. You're already so used to that sensitivity, it will mess you up way more if you do a massive change. So just change tiny little aspects of it. But now let's talk about tip number five, and that is going to be your reticle color. A good reticle color that stands out from the background and other players is very important. And the reason why you want to have these solid reticle colors is because if you're getting into a fight, you do not want to have it lost in the background or be too distracting. Because if you lose in the background, you're not going to be able to tell where you're aiming. But if it's too distracting, then you're going to be focusing on your reticle instead of the opponent. Now, my go to reticle and the one that I always suggest for people that are looking for a good color is this green one that I use. This is 0, 255, 0. Now, the reason that I like green so much is one, it's a very pretty color, but two is that the human eye is most sensitive to green wavelengths. So it has the easiest time picking it out from other greens and other colors. So it doesn't matter if it gets lost in the background because subconsciously your eye is going to have an easier time picking it out. But if you're not a fan of green, here are some other colors that you can try as well. For a yellow color, try 210, 190, 17. For a light blue, try 136, 192, 255. And for a pink, try 232, 139, 255. Now, radical colors are like everything else. These are baselines to go off of. In order to actually hit godlike aim, you as a player need to adapt and grow over time and be willing to change things that suit you. Aim is not a cookie cutter mold. There's no one size fits all. You can't just copy one thing and then all of a sudden you're going to have godlike aim. Take these baselines, build your foundation, and on top of it, grow as a player. And over the long run, you will see massive improvements to yourself as a player. So with all this being said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did and you want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest Apex Legends tips, tricks, and news, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. Thank you guys all for watching. Once again, I'm 8 Second Gaming, and I will see you in the next one.